Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian from Whisper Status 74 and I want to do a quick follow-up to a video that I did the other day, which was a thoughts video on the Artings review of the Samsung AK QLED 2019-900-900R. Now, um, some quick housekeeping for those of you that are new to the channel. The thoughts reviews are basically my thoughts on the reviews of Artings, Vincent, some of the other AVS forums, digital trends. They're basically all of us in the comments together sharing our thoughts on it. Um, now, a lot of people in the comments will say, how do you review a display that you don't own? Great question. I'm not reviewing it. I'm giving you my thoughts on the review. I know it sounds ridiculous, but my thing is, other than reviews or hands-on reviews, what are your thoughts on the accumulated information? What do you think? Um, we can go to Best Buy. We can get hands-on to a degree. They're very hard to see, even in Magnolia, in terms of the natural environment that they're going to be in in your home. It's very hard to discern how these displays are going to look with real content. Uh, demos are full screen for a reason. Um, the TV that you're watching right this minute, go to YouTube, put in 4K demos, and you'll be blown away, even if your TV's 1080p. So they don't always tell the story. Also, numbers, as some of you have pointed out in the comments, don't tell the story either. The video wasn't really on numbers per se. It focused a lot on the dirty screen effect and screen uniformity issues of their flagship. Um, what I mean by flagship is the top of the top. That is the top of their flagship line. They also have the Q60, the 70, the 80, the 90, and then the 900R, um, or 900 and 900R. Very interesting acronyms. I, I love how these companies come up with these, and they're just, sometimes they're confusing. But let's just say that the 900R or 900 is their 8K line, which is their luxury line. I think the Q90 is still their flagship for 4K. And my recommendation after that video was waiting out and seeing how the 4K line shapes up before you buy the 8K line. They could be very different in terms of their local dimming. They could be different in terms of their specs. A lot of times they're not that similar. Um, the 8K line could have a different local dimming. We're not sure. I haven't, I haven't read those reviews yet, but I want to read you a comment from one of the subs to the channel. Um, now, again... The biggest takeaway I had from the review and from myself reading the review was, one, I have absolutely no desire for 8K. And some of you in the comments have asked about that. Why don't I care about 8K? Well, it's very simple. 4K has not been exhausted yet. It's been around for a while. 4K content hasn't become readily available until the last few years. 4K Blu-ray itself, again, wasn't available at launch, as well as 4K streaming wasn't available either. In terms of gaming, um, the RTX or the yeah the RTX 1080 Ti can barely manage 4K at 60, um, and some of the games it can't even do that. I have a GTX 1080 Ti. I can play a lot of games 4K at 60 maxed at the second. Not really all um, current titles unless they're you know very well optimized. Uh, Resident Evil, Devil May Cry 5 runs great. The new um, Ninja game from uh, Dark Souls. Why is that game escaping me right now? That runs great as well. But if the game like Metro Exodus, no shot. So to talk about jumping to 8K, um, just not realistic in terms of gaming, which is my primarily focus. Films are typically 2K upscale. It's just the way they were filmed. It's the way they have been mastered. So a lot of our 4K Blu-rays are 2K upscales. 8K is only going to take that a step further, and I just don't see the point in it. Finish and refine what's happening now before you move on. Um, selling 8K is really what the marketing is all about. They're there to sell TVs. Um, in my opinion, even HDR marketing um, would not sound that great um, as better color, more natural color. They had to sell it as a vibrancy, a dynamic contrast, so to speak, so all of their marketing showed this crazy um, bright image, like a dynamic contrast that you see, or vivid mode on a lot of your TVs. They wouldn't have sold many TVs as 
HDR being such a game changer was about color. They really wouldn't have sold many. 4K TVs are being bought every day. It's hard to find a large 1080p display. Now we have to find something else to sell and that's gonna be 8K. I'm not falling for that, but that's not what this video is about. But what the housekeeping is, I am not a professional calibrator. I am just a guy, just like you guys or girls in the basement. My experience is limited to my years on the planet in audiovisual and video games. And it's just us talking as if we're in a barber shop or all sitting here together watching a movie. That's my expertise. I don't know more than you know. I just know the experiences that I have. I never claim to know more than that. That said, the comments of any of my videos, read the comments. To me, when the comments aren't toxic, some of the best information is there. You have film, film professionals there. You have people that have, more importantly, have the actual displays. And that's where, so, for instance, I'm doing a video on the Vizio Quantum P series. It was a hard, uh, hard TV to track down. It wasn't readily available um, in store to really look at. So my videos were asking the owners of those displays to jump in the comments. Jump in the comments and then the community will then ask them questions. And typically anybody in this community that Whisper Status channel are very helpful. And they typically do talk amongst themselves. If the, tox if the comments get toxic, I remove them. I don't mind if you disagree with me, um, as this comment has. Um, disagree with me any which way that you want. Disagreeing and attacking other people that are asking basic questions I won't have, so I'll just remove them. I'm not worried about that. If you disagree with me, I'll leave the comment in. I have no problem with even learning something from you. Um, and I've had disagreements with many people that are part of the channel. That's what it's all about. It's discussionary. It's got nothing to do with me being right or my point of view being right. I could be wrong. Um, so what I want to read is the comment is from a longtime sub, SD. Hey brother, you know I've been a big fan of your videos for a while and you know my story of multiple Q9FN returns. Now, SD has the Q9FN, he, or has had that, he's had the flagship. Now, we talked about during the video the other day that a lot of these displays are coming back with problems. Um, but that's not just Samsung, that's all of them. None of the manufacturers, in my opinion, are better than the others as far as their um, their defects, because I hear them all. So back to his, um, <clears throat> you know, I've been big, um, okay, here we go. You know my story of multiple Q9F and returns for heavy DSE, which is dirty screen effect, among other issues. I really think you shouldn't jump the gun on this. I received a Q90R, and it solves every single issue that I've had with my Q9FN sets. The panel is clean in terms of uniformity, no more black crush, and as far as contrast ratio goes, the blacks and blooming level is practically identical to the Q9FN. But without the black crush that the Q9FN had had, as far as the stars um, is what you hear on a lot of the videos, they compared them to stars and crushing in the blacks. I can't speak for the 8K model, but we can't go by ratings contract ratio numbers. The Z9F numbers are in the same level as a lower price TV like the JS6500. Yes, the blacks on that aren't good, but no way is it as bad as those budget TVs are in the same not of native contrast ratio vicinity. Even Vincent, which is HDTV test, early impressions of the Q90R, he noticed that the Q90 achieves a wide angle without sacrificing the black level of last year's model. I really think the Q90R is everything you ask for in an LCD, it's finally the LCD that checks all the boxes, in my honest opinion, and a big step forward in terms of refinement. Now, he, from what I can tell, he's looking at the Q90R, um, not the Q900, which is, as he's saying, he has the 4K. So, um, he has a successor to the Q9FM. SD, awesome comment. I really appreciate anyone who also puts in their first-hand experience with a display, especially one in their own home. Um, people will say that a lot of our videos will lack credibility because I don't actually own the display. I can still have an opinion on the accumulation of research and reviews and sifting through them. Don't have to own them. Um, for anyone that says they want to go by owning these displays, I'm in the 75 inch class. So me buying $7,000 or $9,000 displays 
to review them. This channel doesn't make any money, um, so it's not what it's about. Just giving you my opinion on them. I don't play football either. I can give you opinion on the Giants or video games. I don't. So there's really, again, discussionary. But SD, having this display and also having the q fn makes him an expert. It does, as far as what he has in his own home. More importantly, what he's talking about is the contrast ratio is to his eye. And that it has the same level of blooming as the Q9FN. Now, I don't know the specs on the Q90, and if they're different than the Q900, they might be the same in terms of their local dimming, their zones, I'm not sure. But what I like is his comparison between the two. He also has a very clean panel, which is great to hear. Um, it also further illustrates my point a little bit that I would wait to see how these other panels in Samsung's line shake out, particularly the Q8, Q80, and the Q90. Um, Q80 is kind of the sweet spot in the high end, but not the highest end. Um, I believe last year's Q7 um, was the brightest of all of the displays. I think it was still edge lit. The Q7 this year might be full array. Um, I'll have to look into that. But back to his comment is he's right in terms of not getting carried away um, with disliking the AK display. Now, I'm not backing off from my disappointment in their focus, their focus being full viewing angles. He's going by his eye. Yes, I'm going by the numbers of R-Tings with the contrast ratio being different, very similar to the Z9F. But he has the display. He has compared the Q90 to the Q9FN, and he sees very similar picture quality, but improvements. Um, so he has a wider viewing angle, which is obviously carried down to the lower line. Um, well, actually, still the flagship line, but lower in comparison to the AK. And says that it is it has basically cleaned up all the issues you have with the Q9FN, which he's also returned a bunch of them. So SD, thank you so much for your comment. I encourage you to leave more comments for those of you that have these TVs. Um, and my opinion hasn't changed in terms of the Q9, or I'm sorry, the Q900R or 900's focus. Um, I hope that he's right. I hope that the contrast ratio by I, you're right. It's not always about the numbers, SD. It's not about, I'm not ha having, you know, there's no machine hooked up to my TV to tell me um, that the Q contrast ratio is different. With the Z9F having it have gray bars, um, that is obvious. Um, the 900R apparently, we'll have to see how they are in the wild. We'll have to see other reviews. We'll have to see what Vincent says on it. The dirty screen effect, guys, um, he has a good panel. That's awesome. To me, it is unforgivable to have dirty screen effect on such a large flagship display. He doesn't have it on his Q90. Um, I hope that that's how this goes with the AK displays as well, that they don't have those issues. However, I would never um, say accept dirty screen effect. Now, always, we can do a separate video on that. Basically, in my line of sight, right here, middle of the screen, um, if that's in your primary viewing angle, then I wouldn't accept dirty screen. You're all going to have little blotches here and there. It's unavoidable. But to have it all over the screen, um, you can see it on gray. I think uh, Artings was 20% gray. You know, so you're not even saying that's not even, you know, you, you can be the judge of that with slides on YouTube and see how they look. So back to his comment. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for always being part of the channel and also giving me your honest opinion and your first um, first in-home experience with it. If you guys have this display, if you have the AK display, jump in the comments. Let me know. I'm not saying defend it, not defend it, trash it, don't trash it. I want neither. Give me your opinion on it. Are you excited for it? Um, are you somebody who has the Q90, the Q80, these new displays? What do you think of them? I'm not here to tell you that I'm right. I'm here to just tell you I'm open. And I want to learn from the comments. I want you guys to tell me um, what your experiences are. Or if you are don't or you don't have experience with it and you're just telling me, hey, I'm looking forward to 8K. I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. I'm not here to tell you that I'm right. So we're just here having a discussion. That's all the channel really is. Um, for me personally, um, 
it was disconcerting to see that they're focusing on the viewing angle more than having more zones. Now the Z9F has less zones than the Z9D. To me, that makes no sense. Um, Ian Stevenson in the last video had commented that it's probably due to manufacturing costs that perhaps after the Z9D and the KS9800, the manufacturers could have realized they weren't making enough money on each display considering that they had too many zones or the TVs were uh, too complex and they're looking to do more with less. Um, local dimming isn't always about number of zones, guys. It's where those zones are placed and how those zones work together. So comparing number of zones on a P-Series to a 900E to a 940E, it's not always numbers of zones. But when you see a Z9D have a certain number of zones and the Z9F have half of them, it's a little bit alarming. If the black level was perfect, then I wouldn't be alarmed. So that video on the 900, our um, 900 Q900 was more about where it's headed. Um, I want to see the displays improve. Um, SD is saying that his Q90 is an improvement over the Q9FN. That's what I want to hear, if that's the case. Um, and those of you, hopefully he sees this, I'll respond to his comment. I haven't yet. Um, if you see him in the comments, one, don't attack him, but ask him. Ask him what he thinks about the Q90 and also ask him um, in detail um, what his issue was with the Q9FN. That's all we're looking to do in these videos is to keep things open and have other people jump in with their comments. Again, I welcome all the comments. If you disagree with me, that's an opportunity for me to learn from you. Um, SD, that's my opportunity to learn from you, my man. You know, I'm a big fan too. I want to learn from your experience. Um, and the same with if you have the Q9FN or any of the other displays, tell me what you think. That's what the channel's all about. The channel's not all about me being right. I'm not right. I'm just like you guys. No different at all. I'm a big fan. have a lot of passion in this. Um, I just want to make sure that each one progresses and gets better. That's all the other video was about was I want to see better black levels, higher peak brightness, and I want to see more even um, screen uniformity in terms of, especially guys, these displays as they get large, dirty screen effects, vertical banding, these things are an eyesore. Um, and for those of you that say it's not about the numbers, I understand it's really not about the numbers, um, but I can see dirty screen effect and banding pretty clearly. I don't need numbers to tell me that. I can tell you that I've had um, big bands down the screen. They're, they're visible, vis ugh, visible in all content not just in um, gray screen. So um, that was me sharing SD's comment about the Q90. Uh, hopefully he jumps in these comments. Keep the comments coming. Keep them as positive as you can. Even if you disagree, I welcome them all. And I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Thank you as always. We'll see what the Q90 review is. I'd love to see the specs and also see if they are um, comparable to the 900 in terms of its zones and its overall specs. We'll have to see how those TVs roll out. These are still pretty early reviews, and we'll see what Vincent says and some of the other websites, and we'll talk further. Thank you as always, guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.